Hey guys, this is Tim from Tim's Electronics Lab and welcome back to a new video. Now we've got the microscope on the desk and that's not because we're going to take a look through the microscope. We're actually going to upgrade the microscope. Now as I said in the microscope review video and the unboxing video, this was the model that didn't have any batteries installed. And why did I pick that model? Well, because I thought I don't need to be around in the field and access the microscope and view through it on electronics. I'm always at a lab when I need the microscope. So there was no need for a battery. But during editing, I came across the problem that the files got overridden and they're not in the correct order. So I'm hoping that adding a battery to the microscope will actually keep the RTC powered on so that the video footage, the properties of the video footage contain the actual timestamp that they were created on. So that is the reason for opening this thing up and hopefully installing these batteries uh, into it. So let's actually remove the microscope itself from the base here and let's tear this thing apart now i'm also wanting to take a look at the sd card why that's uh, always hanging at the case it's not ejecting properly i need to go in there with uh, one of my tweezers and uh, pull the sd card uh, to push the sd card to the screen side and then it goes flying out so maybe we're also going to attempt to fix that. Now I suppose when you order the model that comes with a battery, there won't be 18650s inside there. It's most likely going to be just a regular lithium ion battery cell. One of those flat things. Uh, so, but I'm rather confident that we've got some space over there for the battery so I think that this should indeed be it there's the screen and the buttons let's actually remove the screen I've got more space to work with. Put the buttons back in their position. Yeah, as I said, I think that there's plenty of room for the batteries. Maybe one, maybe two. I think that two will work just fine. But first we need to figure out where the actual battery connectors are. And I'm assuming that they're on the bottom. So let's remove the board. Yes. Disconnect the flashlight over here. There is your battery terminal. And yeah, that's the point we need to uh, connect the battery to. So you can also see the SD card module that has actually been soldered quite nicely. So I guess that I'm just going to um, sand down the edges of the case a little bit to make the SD card fit better. Now I do have one of these connectors, but by the looks of it, it's a little bit too big. So first let's actually try to fix the SD card slot. As you can see on the inside, there are a few molding residues left over here, a few molding imperfects. So I think that if we can cut those away, We might just be able to 
have a good fit. Now I'm also going to use a bigger SD card for future recordings. Because, yeah, a lot of the footage got overwritten when I used the, the microscope last time. And that was really a shame. So let's see. No, it's still getting caught on the... Oh, wait. Aha. I cleared out the wrong hole. This is the SD card hole. The middle one. And you can clearly see the edge at, at which the SD card is getting stuck over here. So that seems to be working. So that's good. Now there is a thing that we could also do. We could also just remove these wires from the connectors and just put them onto the board. But let me uh, go have a look if I can find one of these tiny little connectors. So unfortunately I was not able to find a small connector like this. I did found a little bag with connectors that I can use to uh, actually connect this wire to. So if I remove this connector from the PCB and I solder this connector on here, we can actually just re uh, reuse this wire. Well, reuse, we can actually just use that wire. So soldering iron is almost ready. It's at 350 degrees. Let's turn on this thing as well. And hopefully we'll be able to remove this header from the board. And there are also, uh, that's going to be a slight problem, maybe. They are using this connector style that the outer shell of the connectors also connected to a ground plane. Let's try to get that heated up. Yeah, I won't use that connector anyway, so it doesn't matter if we get a little bit creative trying to get it off the board. Ooh. Well, that was not exactly what I was hoping for, but let's try to solder the connector to it. Now the thing goes in like this, like this, and this is the the positive side, this one. This is the positive side, but the positive side is over there. So we should solder this connector in like this. And let's add some solder to this thing. Oh, yeah, that's hot and solder it in place. And let's do the other side. Now that looks like it's uh, actually connected. Let's test that with the continuity mode on my multimeter. Positive, should connect to positive. And negative, 
just connects to negative. No, well, it should just connect. Yeah. So that's working. And that's working. Which is awesome. Now, let's uh, glue this in place before it gets loose again. So whilst the glue gun is heating up, we're going to prepare the batteries. Now these are regular 18650s recycled from laptop batteries. And we'll put them in parallel to get more capacity out of them. All right, so I'm going to connect it like this. Which should work fine. And obviously I'm not soldering directly to the batteries. I'm soldering to these little tabs. So that should also be not a problem. All right, so those are connected. Now let's connect. Let's actually glue this connector in place first. Because I think that the soldering iron has heated up enough. Let's wait for this to cool down and let's solder these battery wires to the battery. I'm hoping that they'll fit. Otherwise we'll just solder on this thing again and then it will fit. So one side is soldered on. Now let's actually try it to see if we can fit it all in here. Should go something like this. Maybe we'll swap it around. That's working. And that's fitting how I want it to fit. So let's solder the negative connection in place and We'll install it. I'm really starting to love this soldering iron. It's quick. It solders pretty well. It's got plenty of power, obviously. I mean, it's a 130 watt soldering iron, so you would expect it to have plenty of power. Now we can actually put it back together. Oh yeah, the batteries do need to go underneath the thing for the focus. So we should be able to fit a single 18650 in there. So we'll do that. We'll remove the second battery and we'll only fit one in there. Single battery is unfortunately the way to go, but it's better than no battery. I'm still glad that I'm able to even fit a battery inside this thing. Let's check if there's a voltage on the connector. Yeah, 4.1 volts. So that should be fine. If you focus, um, adjustment mechanism is able to slide on top of the battery. I won't use it at its full focus length uh, range very much, so I think that should be okay. Battery is in place. Nice and steady. Let's connect the camera. Like so. Connect the flashlight. Let's connect the LEDs. Like so. Now that's all in place. Let's put the board back in its position. And screw it. 
screw it down like so and now we should be able to connect the battery the wire is a little bit on the short side but it still manages to connect if we press the power button we should see it turn on which it does and it also turns off so that's rather nice now let's reinstall the screen so the screen is installed let's see if it works it does so that's uh, very good news let's install the bezel again the front panel and let's test the focus range I suppose that the focus range is at its max right now as in all the way extended yes it is you are able to feel it a little bit but it's not that you have the feeling that you're about to break something so that's exactly what I want yeah this feels really good this feels fine let's screw the, this thing back together and let's see if the time and the date is now saved after a unplug and a reboot which hopefully it will it's back in one piece let's turn it on because it should still work there you go let's go into the menu and let's actually set the date and the time there we go so that's the uh, actually I do indeed want a date stamp so there's the date at the bottom let's turn it off And let's turn it on and see what happens. Hey, it remembered the date. So that's uh, really cool. So everything is still working. I'm surprised and amazed. We've got a DIY battery installation in this video. Now there's still one thing to do and that is to actually record a video let's take a look at so it's recording let's take a look at this clip so let's stop the recording and let's check on the computer what has actually happened so I've inserted the micro SD card into my computer and let's actually browse the contents to see what has actually happened a hey, timestamp so that's exactly what I wanted oh you're able to see the timestamp as well over here in the corner but yeah I could just also frame that out of the footage yeah I'm quite satisfied with this uh, little uh, with this little mod actually by the way I still wanted to give you this little clip of me ejecting the SD card which works flawlessly now so guys that looked great and yeah I really hope that you are also going to perform such a DIY upgrade on this little microscope now thanks for watching this video please share it with your friends if one of your friends has got the same microscope as you have and I will hope to catch you guys in the next video bye oh hey hello uh, I, I wasn't expecting you over here well, if you want, you can also view two other videos of me. 
So make sure to click them and don't forget to subscribe and like so you always get notified of my new videos.